All right, so here we are now with session three. So we're going to tighten up the uh, arm now. We're going to uh, shore up the arm and also now the abdomen and chest and lower back, as we can see, in kind of the front of that sofa chair. And uh, we'll be really ready then at that point in time and to go into session four, which will be to uh, add the white chalk and really work those values uh, in the model uh, in this drawing that are lighter than the tone of the paper. So everything we've done thus far tonally or using value, light and dark relationships, right? Uh, we have done to work from the uh, values that are slightly darker than that olive green tone um, considerably to the, the darkest values that we see, which are in some of the cast shadows in uh, core shadows uh, in, on the couch uh, in between him and maybe in the mouth or uh, around the um, some of the outlines of uh, parts of the shadows of the model, the line work. And, and, and that's what we've done thus far besides obviously all the other things that we've been working with, structure, gesture, action, volume, uh, scale, proportion, all of those things, correct. So uh, this is what we're going, again, continuing on with this sec uh, session shoring up the arm, the abdomen, working those values now to um, a, uh, and, and also certainly edges to a much more uh, complete state. Um, and then again, session four will be working those lighter values from uh, about the tone of the paper to the lightest value, the more extreme values we get, which would be highlights um, on some of the uh, areas of the model, but mostly you know, light in the arm, the chest, um, the uh, head, and a little bit on the feet, and the, also the couch, sofa areas to show that kind of vinyl uh, 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 texture that we have, have there. And so here you can see I'm working now, working the edges of the form and uh, solidifying the edges, but I'm not uh, outlining uh, heavily. I'm emphasizing through line weight where folds or turns of the form that I want and it keeping it, you know, in kind of a well, slightly more sketchy. And then I'm also blocking in, as you see here, going back, blocking in the tone again so we can blend one more time and then get closer to uh, what we want on the darker side of our shadow uh, area. So now I'm using a softer, uh, soft and extra soft charcoal pencil. You could probably get away with this drawing if you're working verbatim with me, um, uh, soft and medium and you probably would be fine. You're gonna find that medium you'll be able to control you know, earlier in your, your drawing um, practice and then as you get more competent and confident and have mastered uh, form, then you go into those softer materials and they obey your touch pretty well. I think a lot of students, including me, when I was a student, had a hard time controlling very, very uh, soft types of uh, charcoal, but obviously not uh, anymore. Thankfully, and that took a, you know takes a lot of hard work, solidifying that cast shadow a little bit, just catching that edge a little further. It's not that important, but we want to just I kind of want to be true to as much as of that as we can. Again, I'm focusing here on the figure and a little bit of the surroundings, but not everything. So now stumping back that form shadow on the deltoid, the shoulder there as it turns from the left to the right and exposes the bicep muscle bicep brachialis uh, brachii coming out of the uh, armpit area and underneath the shoulder there that we see. Taking great pains to turn the form by rotating the stump and working the cross contouring across the form left and right across egg forms and two black forms and they're kind of boxy forms too as well. One of my professors, Harry Carmian, when I was in in, in Art Center, and he told me, you know, drawing the figure is like drawing little boxes. And we didn't have a clue what he was saying. I remember he did it in passing one day when he was, we were working on him, we were watching him work on a, uh, a longer term pose, about 30 or 45 minutes for him, since he did it so gesturally, and he was working on the back. And we asked him, how, you know, how did he get all that? And he said, well, it's like drawing little bitty boxes. And we didn't know what he meant. But now I do. Every form can be broken down into simplified forms, like this form I'm working with, where that plane changes. That's where a box 
plane changes. So we see two distinct forms. Same thing that I'm thinking about here when I'm working. I'm seeing the line value pattern. I'm seeing the shape of it. But I'm also thinking that's where the plane changes on a box form. And so that I can think more 90 degrees plane changes and get the feeling of this arm and hand moving downward but have a three-dimensional quality as I'm doing my um, mass, you know, mass blocking or, or mopping of just a two-value you know, system. So it makes it a lot easier. So it made quite a bit of sense there. Just sh uh, shoring up a little bit of the cast shadow down there on the, the uh, ground there just to work a little bit of that. I thought I'd leave some of that in. I didn't want to waste your complete time, but but I wanted you to see a little bit of the um, the uh, background uh, as well that I'm that I'm working to as well. Just stumping all that in, kind of grouping it together. <clears throat> And stumping that background in between there and softening that up. I can go back and draw on top of that additively and then also subtractively to, to uh, kind of corral those shapes a little bit as they as they make it through there <clears throat> or as they, I work through there. and working the neck now. Very tube-like, that light quality, right? Very much cylindrical. And then I'm taking the Japanese mono eraser and I'm starting to cascade over the lovely shoulder area and take out that value that's darker that I don't need and or really refine the shadow shape uh, even uh, further too uh, as well. <clears throat> Scanning over the shoulder there. <clears throat> and just taking great pains to make sure I get the kind of edges that I want, whether they're soft edges, whether they're harder edges, or crisper edges, if you will, or somewhere in between which a lot of the edges fall. You really need to you really want to pay special attention to edge quality and the type of edges you're getting for clarity. It takes a while to get that, but when you finally start to get it. Or the drawings clear up and they clean up and you really understand how to work um, an image and get the clarity that you want with edges. Edges are a, a, a very important part of understanding art and especially in, in drawing and painting but all, all facets of course but especially in art very important. <clears throat> Again, using that triangle to keep my hand and arm off my image. That's a little harder when you have to work flat like I'm doing. Well, if, you don't, if you're not sure, what you're looking at is I'm working the image where it is flat on a, on a, a large drawing board. It's not angled up because um, the camera uh, that I have set up that I have is true 90 and it has to be on a 90 degree tilt with the board. So the board has to be flat so the camera stays straight down. If I had my board at a 45 and my camera straight down, then it would be uh, distorted. And for me to make a camera at 45, I'd have to push the camera up really high so it makes it 
hard for me to draw at an angle, which most people and myself included like to draw with an angle of at least 20 degrees with your drawing board up a little bit, but I can't quite do that. So it's a little bit more of a struggle, but you know, I've been doing this a long time and I can work around it. One of the things that helps is keep, because you're going to have your hand on your drawing more if you don't, is to, is to have that triangle as a protective device. So watch that closely as I do that, as I use that over the, the remainder of the drawing, the last, uh, this session, the last one, but, but also for yourself, how to develop your own, uh, what we call kind of mall stick or a uh, device to, um, again, protect your uh, arm and your hand from the drawing. In painting, it's called a mall stick. And since paintings are tilted, Larger ones, generally on an easel or a wall, a mall stick is developed by a, a dowel rod of wood and, and either uh, a ball of some sort for tape. Uh, a lot of people we take, in America, we take a golf, uh, excuse me, a tennis ball and puncture a hole in it with a drill um, and then put a dowel rod in there, a wood rod, and then you can hang off the side of the easel and then you can uh, rest your hand on it. If you don't know what a mall stick, many of you probably know, Look it up, Google it, and then you'll you'll see pretty quickly that it, it um, it's a pretty nifty device that's been around for as long as art's been around too as well. So <clears throat> M A H L S T I C K, and you can actually buy them. I'm kind of looking it up on my side computer as I'm as I'm. Uh, narrating the videos and that's kind of the same same processes here and I kind of li I'm lifting it off the paper a little bit um, it's not quite flat so my little finger there that's pressing it down on the left bottom that index finger is, is holding it up on the bottom part of my hand and that kind of presses it down and I can keep my hands clean as I'm working these core these form and, and core shadows now on this shoulder working the medium charcoal and just gently um, filling in some of the little slight changes in value, changes in edges, so I can get that as close to that the uh, soft turning look of the deltoid end as it separates into the bicep there. It's a good area where the pectoral of the chest, kind of where the underarm hair is covering, comes over and attaches to the humerus and then the bicep, uh, it goes underneath that and up into the uh, 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 scapula and clavicle uh, area, uh, attaching to the clavicle actually. And then we have the uh, deltoid on top of that, the shoulder. So that three-pronged area that comes into the arm, it's a fascinating uh, area where muscle uh, comes in and helps make the underarm and also this the rounded part of the deltoid somewhat getting that really nice and thick little little dark patch in there where that form turns and hides from the light that's important too as well it was really fun to do the abdomen and the hand to kind of bring it all together kind of the way I work the drawing was really kind of from the buttock didn't I over to the feet and and then from the head back to the waistband there um, and you can do that you can or you know I, again I like to block in everything and then you can work where you want but if I had to do it again, I would generally work from the head uh, over to the feet. It would be easier to protect the drawing um, from smudging, etc. And, you know, every, every now and then I'll look at my drawing and I'll, I'll go back and look around and, and see where have I smudged anything and I'll go back and take those off. It's like good, good maintenance. It's kind of like body maintenance. You know, you want to brush your teeth every day and wash behind your ears and you know, bathe when you, you know, certainly when you can, and that's the same kind of thing as maintaining, maintaining your drawing. I remember seeing this year somewhere, somebody sent me a video of, I think it was a Dutch couple, I'm not sure, but they had, they lived somewhere in the Caribbean, Caribbean, I believe, or some kind of island area. And they were pretty isolated, and they didn't brush their teeth. All they, they ate was fruit, and the fruit was a natural cleaner of their, of their teeth. So I, I, um, I salute them. I don't know necessarily what to think about that, but 
Uh, I, of course, we're not there to check their breath, so I don't, <laughs> I don't know. But daily maintenance of your drawing, that's the point of this goofy analogy. Sorry if I uh, get you off track. But um, I guess daily uh, smudge maintenance is akin to brushing your teeth with fruit. I think that's what we've learned here in this session thus far. All right. Um, yeah. So getting the reflected light now on the bicep. See how that little band there, it's soft, it's not completely hard edge. you got to be careful not make it too hard edge. And nor do you want to make it too light. And that we're going to get helped out when we add white chalk to our drawing. That's going to make that reflected light, which is about the tone of the paper, um, m make even more sense. It's a little bit darker than the paper, but not by a whole lot. But it's certainly going to uh, be pushed back when we get to that white chalk as well. So now we have softening in the forearm here over to the lower forearm as that bicep comes down there. And you can see that little crevasse it makes. It's got little two prongs on it, two tendons that attach to the, the ulna and radius fascinatingly so that the bicep is not connected Oh, to the humerus. It's connected to the scapula and it's connected to the uh, ulna and radius. I think that is the, one of the most dominant and intriguing muscles for, for many reasons. The bicep uh, of, of both male and female do not connect to the, to the humerus, which it is associated with, or the upper arm. So here I'm turning the bicep head there. Notice I'm stroking, that stroking pattern just moves gradually over there. <clears throat> if you see me disappear from the screen a little bit, it's, of course it's fast forwarded. But I'm either sharpening a little bit or I'm having to refresh the image that, from the computer that, uh, that we're all having to work from and then um, any kind of erasing maintenance or what, whatnot. <laughs> But that little divot, that little dark patch underneath the bicep, that's where it started, ends and breaks into its tendons. <clears throat> His is in, in uh, a long extension, elongated here. <clears throat> <clears throat> so you can see that starting to clear up as we move down the arm. So we get the feeling for that, the idea for that. <laughs> Excuse me. Just working down the edge of, of the, the arm there, getting those subtle tones just barely darker than the paper, just slightly. Those are real subtle.
darkening that in, getting closer to the to the value system that I want. <clears throat> The great thing about the the stump is that softening, right? That we can get there. See how dark my stump is now? It's pretty well well saturated with charcoal. So it's already going to be a little bit um, darker when I start to blend, and it's going to just blend nicely. If it was clean, it would take off a little bit and kind of erase it as it's smudging. So you have to be careful with that. So it, it matters how you maintain your smudges, and a lot of artists like to keep them dirty and then use them to draw with a little bit for light lines. I'll show you that technique at, at some point in time. <laughs> Excuse me, and um, it, that, that, that makes a nice case for you know light lay-ins too as well. And going back and drawing over that a little bit to get that the bicep to, to end in that little split where the tendons are, the little darker part, and right on there in the side, really starting to move down now quite nicely down the arm. <clears throat> And then using my kneaded eraser to be as graceful as I can to slide that arm around the outer edge slowly and softly as it turns. That kneaded eraser is so important to get it to as a stamping tool. And you can get it in, in a manipulated in many different widths, the way you you fold it or turn it over and clean it and, and, and manipulate it into quite a bit of different um, shapes to fit into areas that you want it to fit into. <clears throat> And then getting that vein, that's not a tendon or a ligament, that's a vein. And it's a just a raised light cylinder. It's not too light. It's not too, it's darker than you think. It's got a little glistening highlight that we'll hit later. But for the most part, it's, it's in that shadow region, but it's a little bitty tube hump, right, that comes over the, the um, Extensors and flexors. They're mostly extensors of the of the uh, forearm. There and comes on top. And you want doesn't we don't need it to be too hard edged, but it's got a few edges where you want to catch. But it's it's a little it's a little raised protrusion, and it's and it's got somewhat of a harder edge, but it, it's a softer edge as it turns around. And then I have to go back and blend that in a little bit, get that to smooth in enough and then take off some of that extra dark that we have. So what happens in a, with the stump is you'll overdraw with it and then you'll, you'll con control it back with your uh, uh, eraser shapes. That you'll your erase back to those eraser shapes and control your shadow shape if it's a little out, out of where you want it. You just control those edges.
refresh the image a bit there. And so just gently working down the figure, tweaking out those edges. It takes a while, that's no doubt about it. It's a labor intensive um, process. And you need to see it. I'm speeding it up because it was 13 hours. And that's, that's not very long for a drawing. Academic drawings that are really polished could take a couple of weeks to a month, depending. They had to slow it down because they, their lighting was not artificial. <laughs> So they had natural lighting, and that same lighting had to be consistent, so it might take a while. <clears throat> Just getting the finger folds there, working through that shadow form that I initially put down, and then putting a little detail within the shadow. You see several young people, young at heart people, that draw, and they try to draw all the detail in the shadows before they put the shadow tone in. And then they get frustrated because oh, then I dropped in the shadow and all my detail lost. That's right. Find your big shadow shapes for, first, block them in, and then draw your details. And you're constantly having to redraw a little bit. See, I catch the edge of that finger popping over index finger. I'll have to come up, bring that up and over a little bit further. And it's basically just a shadow shape, isn't it? Just a dark shadow shape. Kind of wispy there. It's not that important of an area of the drawing. However, if you get it wrong, it's going to be glaring since it's a hand. But the hand is not the focal point, so we have to keep the hand a little bit at bay. See, I'll have to go back and reattempt. I'm like, I don't like that, where I had to have to rechange re the shape a little bit. There we go. And then getting the silhouette of the finger there, and I can stump that back a little bit, and that feels much, much better overall. And then gently stump into that just a touch to soften it. Get the surface consistency more like I want there. And then we can start the process of breaking down those shadow shapes into light and dark patterns. And that's very two-dimensional. So constantly in my mind, I'm flipping back between the two-dimensional and the three-dimensional. And, and um, that's the way your brain works, too. That right now it's 2D on the outside, and then it's 3D when I start to think about those turns of the folds of the fingers. <clears throat> So those nice thick dashes of dark help turn a form, help give movement to an area where there's quite a bit of strong folding. There you see the separation of the thumb from the athenar region of the palm and the finger as it rests on the ground. Little dark dashes there that turn that turn that form. That's why we can't we can't go we can't outline too long. It's got to be brought broken up to make a good contour line kept in control for three-dimensional purposes. So that's that's getting where I want it with the arm. And so now we'll move on to other parts there uh, of the uh, form, the abdomen now, which is which is glaringly uh, less resolved obviously now than than the rest of the uh, the figure we can see. I guess I'll tweak the hand a little bit further. But now we see the difference between a really good now uh, block in and a, a more time in on the drawing to resolve form in edges. And we see where it's lacking now in the abdomen uh, region. And so I'll move to that in a little bit. <laughs>
Yeah, tweak a little bit further. Of course, shit, I'll guess I had more to do there, of course. <clears throat> Finishing up that section a little further. Really taking my time to tweak and separate out some of those parts. Again, we don't need every fold or every piece of fabric or every skin fold. Now working the side of the chair here a little, sofa chair, as we start to begin to tighten to the abdomen now. So I'll stump a little bit, trawl, stump a little bit. through the abdomen. So I'm strengthening those abdominal shapes from the lat there, coming over, twisting to the oblique, which gets us into the middle of the back there, over to the oblique, and blending again, and being mindful of where the light and dark transitions are, and where it's darker, where it's a little bit lighter too as well. So I'm going to start to corral, beginning to corral these shadow shapes here. We can't also can't forget about the hand in the in the back too. We'll have to take obviously care of that. Working, working down the the model to the underarm, the armpit. It's just a matter of turning and thinking about soft edges versus slightly darker edges, getting a little bit of the nipple there, just a slight darker area. And that pectoral as it turns and attaches back to the rib cage. It's a very unusual position to see it. And then the rib cage area here turning to the back uh, lateral part of the lat, and then of course the serratus interior we don't really see but it's there. Adding core shadow now, darkest parts of the shadow there that turn into the form and those will get blended a little smoother. So we're making additive marks now to the to the process. <clears throat> Taking 
slowing it down, taking great pains to work on edge and shape as we, of course, we work value and also the feeling of anatomy there. Or the feeling of the folds of the skin. So it works through some of those muscle tones. So the figure is greatly stretched here. The figure wants to be sideways facing the, the stand or the chair, but then it's turning that uh, upper torso towards us so we get this nice twist. <clears throat> Excuse me. Working those edges gently there, turning the form as it turns sideways, working reflected light. It's all it's really abstract at this point when you're zeroing in on in an area. You're thinking, yes, about the specific body part, but you're also thinking about what's the most simple form that I'm drawing here as I'm working around the side and then you break it down into smaller subforms. So really drawing the feet is no different from drawing the chest or this underarm area. It's just a different form and a set of drawing problems to deal with. That's why when I see people ask or they do email or videos out there in YouTube land how to draw this or how to draw a head or how to draw a hair or how to draw a butterfly or a pig snout or you know uh, you know, bird's hoof or claw, a cow's hoof, whatever. It kind of it makes me giggle a little bit, and it really goes back to your three best friends: your the cube, the sphere, and the cylinder, and how to draw them well, and light them, and then you observe what you see and draw what you see from observation and/or from memory. So the idea of how to draw something is less important than than what tools, what intellectual, artistic means are you are you using to draw uh, structures. So hopefully you won't get seduced by some of the, the videos that, that do that. But some, some off, oftentimes they can be very good too as well. <laughs> or at least provide entertainment if that's what you what your you might be your purpose. <clears throat> and just taking great pains to soften, turn the form, and add enough enough detail without overburdening the drawing with too much detail as we're making drawings and not again not photographs coming up to the front part of the ribcage sternal area that split down through the thorax
really starting to get those edges to really start to work as it's starting to really start to look like skin and folds and turning. The difference, you know, between where we started earlier and now is pretty pretty palpable and pretty pretty strong now as we're working through. As we start to really get into those tighter areas and edges. It's really the same type of drawing as we work more generally in our in our first couple of sessions, but again it's a good way to show that drawing, at least in this academic kind of traditional sense of the word, uh, can is very much working from general basic block in basic shape form to more specific to very specific to hyper specific and then you could take it to hyper realism if that's your game later on and working this little bulge here is that the oblique gets stretched over to the rectus abdominis area and then back over to this fold really getting those shapes in folds to not only do something kind of like drapery really but also to read well as skin but it's almost like um, the video I did over the latter part of the summer where we're working with drapery and working with folds. It's the same thing sometimes with skin and joints and areas etc. Et Working underneath that split of the spine there, that major division between the two sacrospinalis uh, grouping of muscles that run down the spine. So that darker crevasse is the, where the spine gently rests and it's an underturn, that's why it's darker. So now getting that side oblique there to turn, working that kind of a triangular shape but it's really kind of a boxy form as it raises up where that light is and then flattens where the shadow is. And that's how you work those, those shapes a little bit. And it gets down to, you think about anatomy, but what you're also thinking about what is the central shape? It's kind of rectangular, angled diagonally.
bit of sharper line there on the, that close to that um, band, that waistband where light would go there. Part of, you know, when you're erasing out the light, part of that experience is to learn that that's where little pockets of, of the white chalk will go to clear out the page so that the lighter values can go into that. We're really going to illuminate the this model uh, soon when we finish with the block end final kind of the d darker tone block end of this area. We don't have too too far to go here. And this video about another, I don't know, 30, maybe 20, 30 minutes here. And then in session four we'll get to the the, the probably the most exciting part you'll find of the drawing, which will be the lighter values um, in that elimination. And you kind of have to be careful with that, and I'll, I'll say this several times, that it can run away with you pretty quickly because you're drawing with that light bulb. I like to tell students. And so the more you push down, the hotter the bulb will be, and you don't want to burn the model. And so be careful. Working the undershape there, making sure I get back to a good uh, overturn of the model's outer forms, <laughs> making sure that shape where he rests against the bottom of that vinyl couch, couches, is solidified. I'm just tweaking this reflected light and tightening up a little bit of the curve of the form shadow. We're just about done with this area. We'll move up to the top region around the belly, close there. You can see going back that that dark adds a nice little accent where those deeper core shadows are, just gently in there. And you can leave a little of the tone of your pencil showing through, or you can stump a little bit. You, a little bit of both is probably best. It will happen to get the darkest values because you'll you'll work those darkest values, and if you blend a little bit with the stump, it's going to take them off just a little bit. So that's part of that process is that you get a little bit of value reduction when you use the stump. So that's why you're going to, to have to draw additively. And then you draw subtractively after you stump because the, sometimes you've got an edge that's too soft and you need, to, you need to tighten it up a little bit. So all those things matter. softening and blending using the Japanese model erasers. Highly recommend recommend those. Tiny little erasers. See how you can really get some nice collective edges there to really <clears throat> work for you when you need those little hard edges. Going back another third time, really refining, getting that twist, the elasticity of that skin <laughs> to really fold and turn for us. bit more subtlety to the back. So right now I'm just looking to, to finalize it to where I'm satisfied with the level of form turn and uh, accuracy to the figure and anatomical truth, if you will, to that as best I can. That doesn't mean you have to go out and you know, study the anatomy section right away. Leave that for when you're drawing really, really well and you want to take your practice to the next step. Anatomy should come towards more of the latter part of some of your, your really strong training. You're, I mean, you're always learning. Don't, don't allow yourself the, the foolishness, if you will, of saying you've, you've completely arrived. I'm, always, I'm 51 now, and I've been drawing since I was five or four, so about you know, 40, 47, 48 years, 47. And I'm always learning new, new processes, new thinking, methodologies. 
And by and large, that's what I try to teach and encourage my students. And, and you know, some get that, some um, jump into a box uh, that they're one thing they're good at and they're just not inclined to experiment, especially at their tender young age where you really want to experiment further. Some get that, some, some kind of crawl into a box and, and they don't get out of it. And that's okay. I mean, that's part. That's okay if you want to do that. I just think it's a little, a little difficult to overcome yourself sometimes. It's hard. So we try to keep things lively. So the point being is the anatomy issue. Yeah, I'm thinking about it, but I'm also looking at what's just this boxy fold. You can see, see how I stop and look, stop and look, make sure I'm accurate. You know, it's not a gesture anymore. Oh, we can slow it down. So in that darkest area where it turns in that spine, that's where if we felt his back, we would feel the back of those, those vertebrae, the spinous process of those as they stick out sometimes a little bit. Make those little no, uh, uh, knobs, a little uh, craggy little oval forms in the center of the back. Taking that kneaded eraser, cleaning up a little bit, a little bit of the nipple there. We don't want to overdraw the nipple. I know that sounds weird to say, but you have to be careful with some of those areas. And you want to place it as correctly on the chest as you can in perspective, sitting on top, slightly right by the wrist there. <laughs> Tweaking down here, a little bit further, that lower back. It's like the very top of the sacrum, right before it actually, now running through here. It just takes great pains to erase, draw, stomp, additively draw, stomp, erase, right? And, and whatever measure, or place that you're at with the edges. Sometimes if you overdraw a shadow, you'll take your eraser and you'll uh, lighten up or soften the edge. And other times, it, you know, if you need more shadow, you stump and you draw. And it's just a balance there. It's no right or wrong way. Just at this point, you get what your what your skill set can do for you. <laughs> and you the the way that you uh, magnify or increase your skill set is to have good mentors that helps um, both li alive uh, around you whether they're um, in the same room or through YouTube and or our historical mentors right and then lastly is to draw a lot is to um, take assignments that you learn and recreate them for your own self I get that comment a lot what, what do I do next or or what do I do well, take the same drawing that you did or same assignment and change a little bit. If it was a male, do a female. If it was from the front, do the back. Um, same thing with basic kinds of lessons. And so you're going to have to be creative in your lesson learning if you're on your own a little bit. Ultimately, as students, we, we in professors, we teach our students and we direct them and we control quite a bit for them. And then it's a constant allowing the student to gain confidence and then ultimately more control over the, the entire say-so of their image from start to finish and that's ultimately where you want to wind up to get to a professional. So getting this last oblique fold, see how it's, he's a pretty thin guy but even you know thin people have a little roll there and that's because the band of the shorts are tight against his body and it bulges out a little bit. We want those that elastic band to be tight against the body right in through there. So we have to work our edge, soften that up, 
through here, even though it's a form shadow, and then come back in with a little bit of reflected light and catch it. I'll show you right in back through there. And see how that makes that glow a little bit further there. There we go. See how it catches a form shadow, kind of a, a soft core shadow there, and a little bit more of the form to turn that. And it's hard to see that on the image. Of course, the, the blown up image I'll have in the back of this video and really, you know, of course, every other if, you, if you've been following along pretty well. But once you screen capture it, you'll have it. <laughs> Excuse me. And so we're almost an hour into, we've got about 15, 16 minutes left, but maybe actually 20. And then we'll, we're going to jump to the hand here in a, in a moment and finish out a little bit of this bench. Notice I turn my body when I can. If I was drawing not on camera, uh, I would have it on a board tilted or I'd have it on a wall where I can turn the board in my body more 360. So I, I have to fight these drawings a little bit further uh, as well. So getting a little folds in through here. Okay. Giving myself hand signals for when I want to start the camera, but it doesn't really matter if it's so fast. Get to see how the sausage is made. Sometimes in my other videos I forget to cut out stuff, so luckily I haven't caught myself saying anything. Maybe I, sh I shouldn't on camera. <laughs> uh, Sometimes, a few times of of allowed um, hand washing in my my uh, at school studio. I have two studios. One at one at my home, which I'm at now since of COVID, and then one on campus that's a little bit bigger than the one at home that I have. They're both together about 600 total square feet, so it's decent size. I just have two, so it works out pretty well. So, um, but uh, sometimes I forget to edit. Point being, and you know, I don't want to make sure. Make sure I don't say or do something stupid. My wife gets on me for that. She's like, be careful. You say a lot of dumb stuff. We don't want to get that, get that on camera. She should know. All right, so I'm getting back to the hands, obviously. Um, see that shadow shape the hand makes with the fingers in between the palm there? I'm looking at that strongly to get that dark and get that right, in addition to worrying and thinking about the, the, the finger structure, the skeletal structure, and the joint condyles. Basically, they're two boxy tubes, and they get really rounded as they come together into a condyle, or, a, or we, what we call a knuckle, if you will. It's the same kind of thing. So see them make them those curved lines. And also, I'll make a few passes. It, you know, it's a smaller area, but we do want to get it uh, right, and it's going to take the same kind of, you know, minor manipulation that we start to refine our shadow shapes. The great thing, again, about charcoal is that it can be erased more, more quickly and easily. And uh, unlike graphite or uh, also color pencil, um, it can be taken off and manipulated and changed. But it is harder to control, and so that's problematic. So now I'm getting these fingers to turn the ones that are in light, raising up, and there's a one, one or two behind that uh, as well. <clears throat> So I'll be changing the shape a little bit further, get that dark underneath there a little bit tighter. <clears throat> and we'll cl clean up the perspective of that also that railing. Since we had to change the perspective to straighten it up, you can see the, the, the vertical raisings where his neck is resting on and his calf there. Um, that the foot's overlapping. See how they're not quite straight? They tilt. That's because of the parallax of the camera. The camera was slightly tilted. And so that's one thing you have to be careful of when you take photographic imagery. You want to keep your yeah, uh, your tripod set. My colleague and I decided to take it off the tripod for a while, and which is fine. But we, you know, you do run into that um, parallax, which gives you a little bit more three-point perspective, which can be 
okay, but it can be, uh, it can erode your sense of place. Most of the time we're going to draw the figure, even if we see it three point, which we do a lot, we're going we're gonna to co co um, correct that to two point. Um, even if you don't know what your, your, a lot about three point or two point, you're going to correct that anyway. It's only when we get extreme viewpoints of the figure, like when we, like if we have uh, a, a superhero flying downward or, or we're looking above, it's coming upward, we're going to draw that super uh, 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 change in perspective, and that'll, that'll be mostly three point. But here we won't. We'll, we'll just tie that up. So that's why I put those railings just straight up as we needed to. But that's going to change where his arm is resting on that angle. We'll have to adjust. I think I get to that. I just forget when. So it's still working the shape of the hand. The palm bulges there. The muscle, the meteor palm, the thenar uh, area grouping by the thumb where I'm working on there now, that egg form, and then back where the, the other part of the thumb is the hypothenar. Basically, just a fancy word for the for the palm area. And those, see how the shadow shapes anchor that, and then I, I uh, adjust my sense of form that I know there. It's an egg form that I see and I know, and then also the anatomy part of it as as those those shadow shapes turn into the palm, and then they come down to illuminate. You can see those tendons that are coming from the flexors of the forearm muscle that come all the way to the digits, to the fingers, both on top and also underneath, and they're quite, quite long. We can see them all over our hands quite a bit. So here I'm rendering that palm. I've got a medium charcoal pencil, so not too dark. And then I'm bringing that, the uh, palm down and over there, and then we'll get into those, those stringy tendons. shadow shape. Take a look at the hand below there. And we're going to do the same kind of thing to tighten it up as it's starting to emerge with his fingers kind of relaxed. Our natural hand position is sort of a semi-closed position where the fingers are curled and you can see that just forces the gravity, forces the fingers down towards the palm but they're not clenched. So now working over to get the tendon through there and that's a matter of they're small tubes, kind of like the vein we drew on the forearm there, right? And so that's going to take some additive drawing and then subtractive to get the shape and then tighten it up and then blend a little bit where we can with the, with the stump uh, as well. You can see now that it's starting to get emerge more fully formed and integrated to the to the uh, the drawing of the figure where it's going to be the darker values where that's going to be more finalized. And then of course we'll go back in with the mono Japanese mono erasers and really tighten up that light those edges a little bit. About ten more minutes in the drawing.
It's getting pretty pretty close there. <clears throat> Cleaning up the drawing, any smudgy areas that's incurred. Sometimes I'll take a little break from the area I'm drawing and I'll just see something in the model that can be a totally unrelated area that I'll tweak and then I'll come back to. So I want to refine this hand area further. <clears throat> See how that's getting to a nice look of those up and down ridges of those tendons that are reaching from those flexors. Flexors are just the under forearm muscles. I'm just going to get this to turn through a little dark, little, some areas where it crevices in, turns a little sideways there. So we're simplifying the drawing into a few values and shapes, really getting those shapes as accurate as we can. That's difficult drawing to shorthand. You can still see spending a great deal of time just tweaking little areas. It's just little patches of light, maybe just a little bit lighter or softer working the edge. I'll put back in the cast shadow underneath uh, on the, the uh, couch here in a moment too. Cleaning up that dark. Clean this edge a little bit and that's going to be wrong. Right there, let's see if I correct it. Don't know yet. Because, it's, because that would have to be brought down or raised up. It's better just to bring it down under the arm a little bit. Let's see, bring that cast shadow back. Again, slightly uh, lighter area of the, the couch padding there. those edges. And we'll work the, the padding on the still life area, the, the cloth of the uh, velvet, uh, vinyl kind of cheap uh, sofa chair. So we'll make room for that highlight a little bit later. Just know that if I don't don't correct that armchair part of the drawing underneath his ear to, over to his hand, that little angle would be correct. So I'd have to fudge that, bring that angle down, and it could be resting on just something else or kind of be in the air. It wouldn't really matter. That's that's part of it when you're drawing and you 
you, you've got those parallax problems is that when you correct one area, you've got to correct the other area too. So now I'm just working around the background of the, of the model. We won't catch all that. I'll let the film roll. Well, we've got uh, five minutes left. I'll just let it roll um, around and you can watch that uh, unnarrated and we'll get to session number, number last session number four, which should be exciting with the lighter charcoal value. So enjoy the, the rest of this. You kind of can see me sort of just play around with the aesthetics of the outer part of the drawing a little bit. Um, and uh, we'll get to the light in about four minutes.